Hi and welcome to another coding video. I recently did a series of sessions at conferences and the topic was generative AI in coding. I personally think that systems like GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT are super exciting when you are a coder. And in these sessions, I showed how on the one hand side, you can use AI systems like GitHub Copilot and JetGPT to become a more efficient coder. And on the other hand, I showed how to use these services to make the programs that you write more intelligent. Now this video should cover the first part. So I would like to demonstrate my view on GitHub Copilot. What can it do? Where does it lack some capabilities? Do you need to be an expert to use GitHub Copilot or has GitHub Copilot the potential to make you a senior coder even if you are just starting your coding career? I would like to go into questions like that based on two examples. We will start with a very classical coding exercise. We will do a tic-tac-toe version on the console. That's the first thing and that will help us to explore the capabilities of GitHub Copilot. Then we will switch gears to a second, more elaborate example where we do some sensor data generation and sensor data analysis. And there we will not just use GitHub Copilot, but we will use um, a discussion, a conversation that we will have with ChatGPT to develop some, algor some algorithms to solve some algorithmic challenges and again use GitHub Copilot to really make it happen, to really put it in action. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Here you see an empty project in Visual Studio Code and our first goal is to explore GitHub Copilot in practice using, as I said, a traditional coding exercise, tic-tac-toe. So let's get started by creating a file here, tic-tac-toe game, let's call it tic-tac-toe game, I think that's a, a decent name here, and give it a namespace, give it a namespace, tic-tac-toe, I think that is okay, and then let's create a class which we call game, and let's see what's going to happen now. The important thing is that, let me zoom in a little bit down here, that we have this nice little icon here on the right lower side of Visual Studio Code. That's the icon of GitHub Copilot. I have a GitHub Copilot license enabled here and the gray area that you see here is already a suggestion coming from GitHub Copilot. Now, in many marketing videos, uh, people just press tab now, accept the suggestions of GitHub Copilot, and they are amazed by how well GitHub Copilot can solve the entire problem for us. But this is not what I would like to show you, because in practice, suggestions from GitHub Copilot on that level only work for very simple challenges, like tic-tac-toe. I mean, tic-tac-toe is a traditional coding exercise. It has been done by millions of coders. Therefore, there is an endless number of implementations out there in the wild. So GitHub Copilot has a very easy task of just replicating this knowledge. No, I would really like to keep GitHub Copilot in the co-pilot seat. I would like to be the pilot. And I think this is exactly how you should use GitHub Copilot as a coder. Give GitHub Copilot a lot of interesting hints so it can create code um, for you that makes more sense, that goes into the direction that you want to head to. Let me show you what I mean. Let's create a public enum square content and now GitHub Copilot can be really useful because it knows from its uh, general knowledge that tic-tac-toe requires X, O and empty cells. So therefore, I don't need to write this code. It makes me a little bit more productive because it saves me keystrokes. Next, I go into the game and I immediately see that GitHub Copilot makes a better suggestion based on the hint that I gave it. So I am the pilot but still, I am not super happy with the suggestion here. As you can see, GitHub Copilot suggests a two-dimensional array here. I don't want to have a two-dimensional array here. I want to have a single-dimensional array with simply nine elements. So what I do is I start typing square content. Ah, that sounds good. And then I simply make a one-dimensional array and see what GitHub Copilot does. This is why it's called Copilot. I tell 
uh, the system where it should head to. And now it understands much better what I want to do. So let's accept that one. But still, I need to be a professional because in this case, I don't want to have a writable property. I just want to have a read-only property. It doesn't make sense to update the square content array later on in the game. It should be a once settable pro uh, uh, property. So therefore, this looks nice. So I have to know where I want to go in order for GitHub Copilot to be really, really helpful. Now we have the squares and I think we can also say, let's say square content. Ah, you see, GitHub Copilot now recognized what I want to do. Again, I don't want to create another marketing video for GitHub Copilot. This is interesting, but not super exciting. This just works because tic-tac-toe is a problem that many people have solved. And to be honest, this is exactly where, on my point of view, GitHub Copilot really shines. It frees you from having to write code that has been written by other coders over and over again. So in this case, GitHub Copilot understands what tic-tac-toe is, so it knows that besides the squares, we also need a current player. And this time, it also recognized that I do really care about private and public properties. So it sets a private setter here, because nobody from outside the game should be able to set the current player, and that is perfectly reasonable for me. Okay, let's move on and let's see what GitHub Copilot um, does here next. It suggests um, a method called play. But again, I want to be the pilot. I want to steer the coding plane into the right direction. So what I'm going to do here, and this is how I typically use GitHub Copilot, I specify a comment here. I say a method that places a piece on the board given, and now it's the important one, not a square number, but given a row and column number, and I tell the system that it should be zero based. This is how you often work with GitHub Copilot. Oh, sorry, I talking and typing at the same time. This is how I often use GitHub Copilot. I write the documentation first, and then GitHub Copilot understands what I want it to do. And you see, here we get a new method, place piece. It says row and column. I think that looks really nice. So let's do that one. And let's see whether GitHub Copilot can help us come up with an implementation of this place piece here. Now, sometimes with GitHub Copilot, you have to be a little bit patient. It takes a while until it picks up what it should do. Sometimes it doesn't pick it up immediately. It depends on various factors like the load they have on the servers. But if we are patient enough, we get something that might suit our needs. And you see, what we get here is a decent implementation of this method. Let's accept it. But then we again need to take a seat in the, in the pilot seat because Copilot is somewhat like a junior developer. You see, take a look at this, for instance. I can write that in a much more simple and nicer way. I can, for instance, say if row is lower zero or greater two or column is lower zero or greater two. I use pattern matching. I use relational patterns here instead of the old syntax. So I need to really know my stuff. I need to really know C sharp in order to benefit fully from GitHub Copilot because it is a kind of junior developer. Will that change in the future? We will see. Nobody really knows how fast it will progress. But currently, it is a kind of junior assistant that can do really amazing things pretty quickly. But you need to check the algorithms. You need to check the syntax that is generated. Here, we have exactly the same. This is one, this is a thing that I typically don't do. This is, as you can see here, repeating myself. I have this business logic of calculating the index in the array, and this is duplicated. I don't like that. So here, I will again create a comment method that calculates the index in squares based on 
on row and column number. And you see, it already recognized what I want to do. So GitHub Copilot is not just about generating code, it's also about generating documentation. It also recognized that I seem to like to work with zero based numbers here. So it already suggests zero based, that is fine. And now I don't have to write anything here, I can immediately accept that one. And you see GitHub Copilot learned from what I already specified. It saw that this is the syntax I prefer. And therefore it used exactly that syntax up here. Well, we could discuss whether we want to have this check here, if it's a private method, let me show you that. I don't need this checking because it has been done by the public method before. Again, I need to be at, at an experienced programmer who knows what he or she wants to have. But still, this is kind of interesting that GitHub Copilot learns what I do. But don't get a wrong impression here. We are not talking about a deep learning model that is continuously trained based on my uh, preferences. That is not the case. What GitHub Copilot does behind the scenes, it takes a lot of your code, takes all this code and sends this code using prompt design to a large language model uh, originally, uh, originally developed by OpenAI. And this large language model uh, takes into account all the code that I've currently written and generates something at the where I'm currently standing with my cursor. So it's not a large language model that is continuously trained, it's more prompt design that we are talking about here. If you're not familiar with prompt design, Google for learn prompting, for instance, it's a nice website where you can learn the basics of prompt design, a super important skill, which I will elaborate more on in a follow up video to this one. So I hope you got the idea so far. So in my case, I want to make it private, I don't want to have uh, the check here. And I also want to change the syntax a little bit to use expression bodied members here. See, I think I made the point clear so far, I need to know where I'm heading to. I'm not uh, convinced that go copilot will replace me immediately, it makes me simply more efficient. However, I still have to stay in control, I still have to check the syntax and the semantics. Now here I have this get square index. So I now want to use it here. So let's remove that one and see whether GitHub Copilot manages to immediately suggest what I want to do. So let's trigger GitHub Copilot by writing these square brackets here. And we see that in this case, GitHub Copilot doesn't really pick it up. It's not an exact science here. I mean, that's a large language model that has um, some level of randomness embedded here. And sometimes it picks it up sometimes not. So in this case, I need to start typing get square index and specify the row and the column myself, you see, now it works. And I will, I will take this one and I will remove that one and put it here. Now, of course, we can imagine a future world with the next version of GitHub Copilot where GitHub Copilot could be more active, where I can maybe select this one and ask GitHub Copilot to, uh, to suggest refactorings in this case, replacing the uh, manual business logic with a call to get square index, but currently it is like it is, I have to become active myself. This now looks okay, let's stick with that one. Next, we're going to create a method that um, uh, the returns the winner of the game, if there is one, or let's write it a little bit differently. Uh, or null if there is no winner yet. You see, with a plain English language, I'm describing what I would like to have. And now I'm simply waiting a little bit. And you see, I get um, the, the method generated by GitHub Copilot. Because I wrote a decent documentation. Now GitHub Copilot knows what I want it to do. I'm the pilot copilot is the copilot as the name suggests. So this skill of being able to write good documentation, good comments to steer Copilot into the right direction is very important for future developers. So this is kind of also prompt design, but prompt design inside of the code inside of the IDE. So I will accept that one. Let's scroll down. Looks good. 
I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of obvious what it does. What it does, um, it already recognized that I have this get square index up here, so it learned that I have this method. So this is not generic code, which could which I could have also probably copied from some GitHub repository or Stack Overflow post. But this code is really tailored to my specific surroundings, to my specific methods. And that's a huge advantage of GitHub Copilot to systems like Stack Overflow, for instance, where I only get a generic code. So I really like that one. Let's say, okay, that that is okay. I could now ask GitHub Copilot in the next version, there is also already a preview version to, for instance, generate some unit tests for that. But this is topic for a different video, not for today. Do you want to try it? Oh, I definitely would like to try it. So um, here, I go into program CS. And now I would like to use my game here. So let's create a game. Okay, first, let's say uh, using tic tac toe. Oh, IntelliSense screwed up here. That is not what I wanted to do. Now it's good. And that's okay. It already recognized that I want to have a game. But now I would like to have a game loop. So let's create a do while and let's see what GitHub Copilot suggests here. Uh, if I say something like get winner, you see, it already understands I have a loop, I have a game, I have tic tac toe. So I don't need to write exactly that end condition of the loop because it understands that this game loop should run until there is a winner. Okay, that looks okay. So now what should we do inside of the loop? Oh, it suggests something. It suggests that we first write the current player. It suggests that we ask the user for row and column, then it places a piece and then it prints the winner. I don't like this structure. GitHub Copilot creates some code. You might consider it okay, but I don't. So what I'm going to do again, I am going to give it um, some hints. I'll say, ask the user for um, coordinates to place the next piece the coordinates should be in the form a1, b2, c2, etc. See? So let's see what we get here. Okay, console right line, enter coordinates. Ah, GitHub Copilot is a little bit screwing up here. Now it's okay. Uh, string coordinates, that looks good. Oh, I am an experienced programmer, so I know that I really want to replace null values, maybe something like this with empty. So, okay, it checks the coordinates. That is fine. I like that one. Let's go on. Let's see what it now does. Convert the coordinates. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I like that one. And I also like that one. Okay. Mm hmm. That is, that is fine. And now let's see what's going on next. Place the piece on the board. Ah, okay, it runs place piece and um, does some, some checking, some exception handling. I think that is okay. But let's see, argument out of range exception. Let's open tic-tac-toe game and let's take a look at the place piece here. Yeah, we have an argument out of range exception. That could happen. So this is fine. Do we have an invalid operation exception here? Yes, this is also something that is okay. And then if we have a winner, we end the program. Okay, I like that one. Last but not least, we need to print the result of the, of the game or the current state of the game. So again, let's give GitHub Copilot a chance to help me. Um, a method that prints the tic-tac-toe board on the screen using ASCII art characters, something like this. Let's see what GitHub Copilot is capable of doing. Okay, I see it creates a header. Uh, it prints things in this ABC format. That sounds good. It does the a switch expression here correctly, but I don't see a lot of ASCII art characters. And you see, I can now go through and the next version, ah, see, it has some ASCII art characters. You see, uh, let's check the third version. 
the only difference is ah, that it uses the get square index here. We'll see uh, whether this is okay. Let's take this version. And now I have a problem. First, it generates here a private keyword. That is not a good idea because we are in top level statements mode here. Private doesn't exist. Next, it uses get square index here inside of this print board method, but get square index doesn't exist. It exists in this class, but get square index, as you can see it here, is private. So you see, again, GitHub Copilot is far from perfect. For me, as the pilot, as an experienced programmer, I know how to fix this problem. I could, for instance, say this is public, well, we could discuss whether this is a good design, whether we want to make this public or whether we want to create a helper function. But for the sake of the demo, let's just say we make it public. I think you get the point, right? And then we can move that one here. But in reality, it would be necessary for me to really think about how I want to change the design so I get a good access to the squares of my board. And that's my job. That remains my job. So I need to be an experienced programmer to really fully benefit from GitHub Copilot. So let's see how we can uh, add this one. Here we have the place piece. And I think after the place piece, we can print the board, right? And GitHub Copilot immediately understands that. And I think this is okay. Maybe at the end, we should also print the winner. GitHub Copilot understands that. So I just need to accept the suggestions. And with that, my simple console tic-tac-toe game is done. It was a nice cooperation of GitHub Copilot generating some code, which would have taken me a few minutes to write. I would be able to, but why should I if I have Copilot and my own um, my own knowledge, my own experience, my own software design thoughts. I think this is exactly how you should use GitHub Copilot. Now let's go into the terminal and let's say .NET run to see whether it really works. It compiles correctly. Uh, let's write on A1, you see. Then the next one says B1 and you see it works nicely. Then we have A2. Okay, that is okay. Then we have maybe uh, C1. Okay, and now I think X is really on a winning streak here. A3, oh yeah, we have it. The winner is X, we have this one. Uh, we could now go into more details, think about whether the ASCII art is really beautiful and, and maybe have uh, some additional working going on in this, in this application, but it's just a sample and I think, I hope that I could make the point clear what GitHub Copilot can do and what GitHub Copilot can't do. For those of you who are just at the beginning of their careers in coding, yes, it makes sense to know how to code without GitHub Copilot. You have to practice that. That is super important. You have to know your languages. You have to know your frameworks because GitHub Copilot frees you from some boring, um, uh, from some boring glue code, from uh, boring typing. But at the end of the day, you have to know where you want to head to. Okay, so let's delete that one and let's go on to a second example that I prepared for uh, generating code for using Copilot and this time also using ChatGPT to make us more um, experienced programmers. Now, the next example is a more complicated example. It's not just uh, writing a tic-tac-toe example. In the next example, I want to simulate maybe a sensor, a sensor that might be built into a machine or something like this and gathers uh, data, gathers data about its surrounding, maybe temperature or, or, or speed or velocity or force or whatever. Now, we don't have a hardware sensor here. So the first task that I have is simulating sensor readings. So what I want to do uh, is I want to write a program that simulates the creation of sensor data. The sensor data should roughly follow a sinus curve curve, okay? Roughly. There should be some outliers. There should be some noise. It shouldn't be a smooth sinus curve, but still, 
it, it fo should follow the sinus rhythm approximately. So I created a little bit of starter code, which I will copy in here. And this is what I came up with. You see, I have uh, a console write line at the beginning. Then I have a loop because I want to ask the user for some parameters, um, how the sinus curve should look like. And then I have some options. I thought about the options and I said, okay, my data, my sensor data generator should create a certain number of sensor values. It should um, adhere to a certain frequency, a certain amplitude. There should be outliers, a certain percentage of outliers should be inside of my data storage. And there should be maybe an outlier factor where we see how large the outliers should be away from the expected value, something like this. We will see if we, if we need that, okay? That looks pretty good. Now, first we have to ask the user for these values. And here is where GitHub Copilot shines. You've seen it before. We will use it again. And you see, we simply say, ask user for data generation options. We again um, use here um, the, the idea or the concept of writing the documentation first. And now you see it hallucinates that there are methods like ask for int or ask for double, but we don't have these methods. That's a typical case of hallucination. See, I don't like that. That's not good. Let's take a look at the next one. Ah, there is something which is called console helper. I would have to write it, but I don't want to write it. I want to have the code here. It's really simple. So I immediately start saying console write line, something like this. Oh, see, that is interesting. Now GitHub Copilot has a hint what I want to do. It now understands that I want to ask for uh, data options, for generation options, and it derives a decent question to the user from the name of the property down here. Let's accept that one, okay? We can do that, no question. However, we could also make it more interesting by being more specific here. We could say uh, 1000 is used if you just press enter, see? So I'm, I'm really careful about what tips, what hints I give to Copilot. And let's see what it now comes up with, see? It now comes up with a meaningful question to the user. Yeah, with a meaningful question. And here you see the null handling is perfectly fine. Oh, I have chosen the wrong one. This is now perfectly fine. It read the prompt, as you can see here, and it understood what it should do down here. I mean, it's a text generator. Of course it understands it. But you have to be aware of that behavior. If you do it like that, GitHub Copilot becomes a more powerful tool for you, okay? Of course, we could add more hints, like something like uh, use try parse instead of parse, so there shouldn't be an exception and things like that. But for my demo, it's perfectly fine like that. So let's see what it's going to say. Ah, I see. It suggests that one is a good default value for the frequency. In fact, I want to have two, just because I would like to be in charge. <laughs> the amplitude, I want to have five as the default value. Sounds good. Uh, the outlier percentage, that would be 10 percentage. Um, that is okay for me. Let's, let's take that one. That is okay. And last but not least, we have the outlier factor and I accept the suggested, um, the suggested default value. However, if you take a close look, we again have a little bit of a problem here. I mean, these values are all fine, but here we are just, or GitHub Copilot was just assuming that we are in the English culture and that the dot is the correct uh, character to separate the decimal places. But that doesn't need to be true. If you want to write code that is culture aware, here you probably have to change something here. And this is again something where you need to have some experience and you need to know what you really need. So. Keep that in mind. You have to be a good developer in order to really use GitHub Copilot in to its full extent. Now generate the data and it will um, generate some options, something like this. I don't need to come up with that uh, by hand. It will automatically map the local variables to the parameters of the record. Very good. Let me take a sip of coffee and then we will continue. Good. 
now we have some options and now we, we need to uh, create a function that really generates the random numbers. And here, to be honest, GitHub Copilot is not where it could be. We will use a different tool. We will use ChatGPT. In my case, I am not going to use ChatGPT directly, but I'm going to use the Azure version. If you work in a business context like I do, not in a, in, a, in, a, in a private context, then it's very important to have control over things like data center locations, um, over data security, data safety, data governance, and so on. You want to embed your system into your uh, cloud-based virtual networking infrastructure and things like that. Luckily, Microsoft provides exactly that. So what I did is I deployed two Azure Open AI environments in my Azure environment, as you can see it here. And um, let's take a look at that one. See here, I deployed models. For instance, I deployed the GPT-4 version uh, of the large language model and I called it complete four. See here. And then I can go to the Azure OpenAI Studio, which I have already open here. And now I have a user interface on top of my Azure deployment of OpenAPI. And that helps me a lot. That is much more um, business ready than the, the default user interface of ChatGPT. So here you see I'm using this complete four model. Now let's think about what we want to do and let's use GPT-4 as our coding body. So I came up with, um, uh, with, a, with a prompt that is somewhat describing what I want to do. Let me read it for you. Help me write a method that generates 500 random data points in C-sharp. The generated data should roughly follow a sinus curve. However, a small number of value, oh, sorry, of values should be plural here, should be obvious random outliers. So let's see how, uh, how ChatGPT4 can handle such an abstract problem statement. And we see it generates code. Let's take a look at the code. First, let me apologize for uh, some uh, characters or some some uh, some addings here that shouldn't be here. Here you see the NBSP. It's an HTML um, a character here. It shouldn't be here. I'm using a preview version of ChatGPT4 and a preview version of Azure OpenAI. So uh, please uh, don't be angry with me. Just just uh, just ignore these NBSPs. We will simply replace them. Now let's take a look at the code here. Generate sinus data, data points, frequency, amplitude, noise, outlier percentage. That all looks pretty okay. But again, as a, as a modern C Sharp developer, I see mistakes here. It's using new random here. But in modern C Sharp, you should use something else. So I can get in a conversation with OpenAI with ChatGPT4. I can say, oh, I see you use new random shouldn't shouldn't we use random.shared in modern C sharp? Let's see what ChatGPC tells us. And let's see, I see, yes, you are correct. And it's rewriting the code. It correctly states that random.shared should be used in our code. And you see, ah, the, the code looks okay. There is a little bit of noise going on, as you can see here, that is okay. And we have some outliers here. So I think we should try to work with this here. So copy this code and go back to Visual Studio Code to my editor and paste the code here. Now I have to clean it up. As I told you, this is um, preview software. So it's not perfect in generating all this code. I have to go here and I have to remove all these NBSPs. That's not a problem. It's They are, they are immediately gone. Um, and last but not least, oh, I screwed up. The record must be at the end of the, of the file. And with that, I have compiling code. Now, of course, I need to take a look at the code, whether it's okay. But the point here is that I don't need to do that manually. I can have this conversation with the AI 
And the AI is really pretty smart in changing the code. It still requires me to be an expert, to be able to consume this data, to check the algorithm, to fix some syntactic problems, to understand how this fits into my overall application structure and architecture. Now we have this, um, this function here and we can now use it to generate the data. Let's do that. Let's see whether GitHub Copilot can help you doing that. And we see, yeah, it works pretty nice. It fills automatically all the parameters because it saw that we have some, some, some options here that sound like the parameters that um, JetGPT generated here. Um, it's, uh, it, it didn't make a perfect job because the outlier percentage should really be the last parameter. See, there we have the outlier percentage, outlier percentage. It didn't use the outlier factor I will not change the algorithm because it's just a demo and I think you got the point so far. And the noise factor should really be uh, exactly what we have here. So I will simply accept the, um, the, the standard here. So the outlier percentage should be the last one and now it should be okay. Now we have the data, isn't that nice? Wouldn't it be nice if we could now plot the data in uh, in some kind of chart, a scatter diagram or something like this? Oh, that would be definitely like uh, that. Nice. So let's do exactly that. And I have prepared a prompt for ChatGPT for exactly that purpose. So let's clear the chat here and ask ChatGPT. I am looking for an easy way to generate the scatter plot in C sharp. The component should be able to generate plot images on Linux. So let's run this one and let's see what it suggests. Okay, it suggests a library called Scott Plot. And if I take a look, it even gives me the command to install Scott Plot. But I have a problem here because if I take a look at this library, let me bring it up here. Uh, Scott plot, something like this. If I take a look at this library as an experienced C sharp developer, I immediately recognize that there is a V5 beta version here. And now I have to decide whether I want to use the beta version or whether I want to use the original, the, 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 the production version. And in my case, I want to have the beta version. And therefore, I cannot take this code that is here. It's, it, it doesn't work in the version 5 of Scott Plot. Believe me, I tried it. So again, this is something where I need to be in charge, where I have to be conscious of what I'm doing. It's not a full self-driving system like in cars. It's just an assistant. So if I didn't know about Scott Plot, then GPT was useful for me to give me a starting point for a Google research. Now, the rest has, been, has to be done by me. I added already up front the necessary dependencies here. It's Scott Plot 502 Beta and an, uh, a Skia Sharp uh, library, a Skia Sharp Nougat package to make it not work nicely on different Linux operating systems. So you see, this is what I have to do on my own. And now I have to come up with a little bit of code uh, plotting all the data um, and I came up with this piece of code. Oh, I called it data here. That is fine. And this should write the, uh, the, the values in a file called quickstart.png and I can take a look at this file later on. So you see, ChatGPT was useful as an assistant, but I had to really do the final perfect work to do to make the software do exactly what I want to have. So let's let's give it a try, right? Let's say .NET run and let's see what's going on here. Um, values 1000 is okay. Oh, you see, not in a correct format here because it's using null handling. You see. ChatGPT, or in this case, GitHub Copilot screwed up. It thought that read line would return null if we just press enter. As an experienced programmer, I could have known that, but I really wanted you to see this mistake. So this is not really good code. We need to change it. We would have to change it in order to make it clearer. So what can we do is we can say here, string dot is null or empty, something like this. Here, if it is null or empty, then I want to have 1000. See? Otherwise, 
I can make a console read line again, but it's wrong again, you see? I have to, I have to know what I do. I, it's not trivial solving this problem. So I can delete everything and see what's going on. GitHub Copilot is still suggesting read line with null handling. So let's try to change that. Var input equals to console read line. That is okay. And again, it's doing null checking, but that's not enough. I can say if string dot is null or empty input. Let's see what it suggests now things are looking better and I can now say number of values int dot parse input. Let's try it again and let's see whether it works. Oops, sorry. I have to rerun it here. Okay. Dot net run. Come on. Good. Let's see. Now I press enter and now it works. Did you see? Blindly trusting Copilot and ChatGPT will at least now in March 2023 not lead to good results. We have to be experts, then we get more productive. Now I enter the correct values 2 and 5 and uh, 0 0.1, that is okay, and the outlier factor, whatever. And let's take a look at the diagram. And here we have a diagram that looks pretty neat. That's exactly what I wanted to have. Now imagine I will, not, I will not code this completely, but imagine that we now have the next task. The next task is to somehow get rid of the outliers. Now, how can we do that? We can do again some prompting. And I came up with a prompt here, which I would like to read for you. Let me scroll down here or zoom down here. In C sharp, I have a list of double values. The values are sensor readings. I plotted the readings and saw that some values are obvious outliers. Can you help me write a method that identifies outliers and replaces them with the average of two neighboring values? Now, I even give it more suggestions. I say, from looking at the data, I think it would be a good idea to identify the outliers by calculating the average absolute distance between sensor readings. Every value that is more than three times the average distance away from the previous reading can be considered an outlier. Please generate just C sharp code without description. That is a pretty abstract problem statement. But still, ChatGPT is capable of generating code for us. And of course, we want to try it. See, it gave me the code. Obviously, I have to check whether it does what I want it to do. But hey, for this demo, for the sake of the demo, I'm just accepting what it suggests. Let's clean up here a little bit. Let's clean it up. We already discussed the problem with the NBSPs here. So let's do that one. And you see, we have a method remove outliers. And let's check whether this works to go here and here remove the outliers. And guess what? The copilot recognized that I just wrote a remove outliers function and guessed correctly that I would like to correct my data using the new function. And of course, I want to add it to the chart. And again, GitHub Copilot makes me more productive because I don't need to type it in. It automatically recognized what I wanted to do. Let's give it a try, right? That's my final demo here, and then we are done with this video. Uh, yes, we want to have 1000, frequency is 2, amplitude is 5, percentage is okay, this is okay, and let's take a look at the quick start here, and let's see, yeah, it does approximately what I wanted to do. It's not perfect, as you can see, sometimes it works nice, but some outliers are still here. And now I can go back to my AI and have a further discussion. I still have outliers. Can you suggest more elaborate algorithms for outlier detection? Please provide Wikipedia links for further readings. And let's see whether ChatGPT can help me. And in fact, it can. As you can see, it gives me some 
more elaborate methods. I'm familiar with some of them. I'm not familiar with some of them. So I can now use these links and I can use that as a starting point for further Google researches. And maybe one of these methods is okay. I can ask ChatGPT to generate the sample implementation of exactly those methods. I'm not inventing a brand new algorithm or solution here, but I'm using ChatGPT to, um, to, to, uh, go into um, unknown territory for me. And that's exactly what I wanted to show you. So I hope this video was somewhat interesting. The essential takeaway from this video is it's an amazing time to be a software developer now. With tools like Copilot and ChatGPT, you can be a more, more, um, uh, a more professional and a more productive developer. This is what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. A more productive developer. But you have to know your stuff. You have to know your languages. You have to know your frameworks. And you don't, you must not trust these systems blindly. Maybe that will change in the future. Maybe at one point in time, we will become the co-pilots to an AI being the pilot. But as of today, this is not the case. So thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Bye.